I don't understand. Tonight why I have to on airline. You could very easily put us on if you wanted to. The seats are there. We are here. It's chaos at Luton when fog closes the runway. Remember, I checked when you were over the back. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, no, I didn't. Did. Just how far can good manners take you? Please, please, please. Please try and get me onto it. Get me onto this flight. Well, after you. And a trainee pilot feels the heat on her first flight. She's qualified and she's in charge. Can they get out here? Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If you can use some exotic booze, there's a bar in Far Bombay. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. Luton Airport at 6.30 a.m. It's bad news. Hi, it's Jane. Hey, what's happening with all the flights? With the Zurich and that? Oh, you've got an hour and a half to two hour delay on your flight due to fog here. The airport's actually closed. The whole country has been shrouded in a thick fog. Worst hit of all seems to be Luton. With visibility down to 50 metres, the runway is closed. Nothing can take off or land. This is the worst I've ever experienced. And I think in 25 odd years of flying, I've never been delayed so long getting airborne. So it is fairly unusual this morning, but it does happen, unfortunately. In the departure lounge, hundreds of stranded passengers are resigning themselves to a long wait. They have no idea when they'll be able to fly. I'm trying to keep her amused. <laughs> yeah, we're waiting for your airplane, aren't we? Yeah. Yes. So I'm going for a job interview, so it can be more crucial Seems a shame we could send men to the moon, but we can't get aeroplanes out of foggy airports. The knock-on effects have also brought Liverpool Airport to a standstill. So it's return today at 18.25. At the sales desk, Lian Chung is trying to cope with a flood of refund requests. The Luton flight should have left an hour ago, and businessman Ian Lawrence wants his money back. I'm going to drive. Um, can I have a... Yeah, the flight's been delayed. It should have, should have gone 10 to 7, and it's now 10 to 8, and uh, I've got to meet at half past 10 at Luton. So I want to drive it. Should have done it in the first place. Got a gentleman in front of me that makes another mail to come in off this, but he's got two pieces of luggage. Is there anyone available your side to go and get them off the aircraft? Come in here. How long do you reckon that'll take them? Yeah, he's just going to call them on the radio now because they're out there anyway, so it shouldn't be too long. Right. Well, I might not be late, who knows? Yeah, I might be lucky. It depends how quickly my bags come out. Fortunately, she said, I'd forgotten I had bags here. <laughs> I'd just driven off without them. I'd have, I'd have got there with no clothes to wear. So what are you going to do now? I'm going to drive it. All the way? All the way. On your own? Could have stayed in bed an extra hour or two. I wish I could have stayed in bed an extra hour or two. I wish I hadn't come in, cos they're all delayed now, cos of the fog, are you? These bags, there you, there you go. Thank you very much. Are they yours, yeah? The pressure is on for Ian. He's due at his meeting in two and a half hours and it's a 200-mile drive away. 24-year-old Liverpudlian Georgie Hobbs is one of 50 new pilots EasyJet has taken on. Georgie will face a rigorous three-month training course before she's qualified to fly for them. Today she's taking part in a team-building exercise. But it's not her flying skills that are being tested. This is a computer. Oh, yes. You could tell that, couldn't you, immediately? And this is because um, it's just saying that it's the web's favourite airline and we're just basing it on the fact that um, a lot of the sales are done over the internet. I've come from uh, Debonair and they went bursting. I was with them for two years and it was a similar type of idea. You know, that was my first airline that I worked for and it was um, a small airline and I was with them as they grew. And rather than start off and you're a small fish in a big pond, I'd rather be, hopefully, a big fish in a small pond. The airline already has 260 pilots. Georgie will be one of only 10 women among them. If I fly with the first, a captain for the first time, I know the first, you know, first thing he's thinking about probably is the fact that I'm a girl. Whereas with every other first officer he's ever flown with, it's you know how he's flying. So you always have to get over that initial hurdle before he actually realises that you can actually you're actually good at flying an aeroplane. At Luton, the fog is going from bad to worse, 
and no one knows when the planes will be cleared for takeoff. Bye, thank you, merci. Inside the terminal, it's turning into the day from hell for Jane. Yeah, well, when she's finished um, typing. Do, do These sisters have been trying to change their flight, but there's some confusion over who they've been speaking to. Remember, I checked when you were over the back. I'm sorry, no, I didn't. I said to you, I said the was closed, we couldn't get you on it. No, I said, she came back to tell me, oh, that's all right, we're going to go on the end. It was you. I'm afraid there's not another lady with striking hair like you. If they'd have just given us more information, we probably could have possibly got onto it, but they don't seem to be interested to, uh, to, to fill up the on. plane and keep passengers happy. I would never turn around to anyone and say, yeah, I'll get you on the flight and then walk away, which I thought was really bizarre. Anyway, she said, there's only one person who's there for with stripy hair, obviously meaning myself. Bothered. <laughs> Not. <laughs> At 24, Georgie will be one of EasyJet's youngest pilots. But she's been flying since she was 15. She qualified for her private pilot's licence on her 17th birthday. I couldn't get any time off school, so I had to I'd go really early in the morning. And my mum didn't want to know I was doing it, but I told him, um, I didn't tell my dad either, but he knew that I'd always do it on my 17th birthday, because obviously I wanted to do it as soon as possible. Qualifying as a first officer for EasyJet will be a stern test of Georgie's ability and determination. As a young pilot, she's under added pressure to prove herself. You are going to be nervous if, somebody, if there's um, a, cap, a captain who's been flying the 737 for 25 years and I've been flying it for a week. And, you know, because I want to obviously show him that I've got the ability to be able to be, to be, you know, to be very good. At Liverpool Airport, the Luton flight is boarding. Oh, no way, this fellow wants to go. <laughs> Not at him. Can we put him back on it? As he was leaving, Ian Lawrence heard the flight was now boarding so and decided to go back to plan A. Start at board and just go straight through. See you, Leon. See you, Thank bye. You bye. Ian is finally boarding the plane to Luton, but his troubles aren't over yet. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're actually uh, still waiting for the runway uh, visibility to improve at Luton. And unfortunately, it's uh, not showing any signs of doing so at the moment. As soon as it uh, shows any signs of being available for us for landing, we'll be taking off from Liverpool. Thank you. Evidently, there's two fellas at Luton Airport standing 200 metres apart with a tape measure, and only when they can see one another can we leave. At last, it's good news. The fog has cleared, and the Luton flight gets underway. Though delays will continue for the rest of the day, the worst of the chaos is over for Leanne. It's been a nightmare, but I've been on my own and what they all hoard round you, because there's so many at one time, it's, it's really, really intimidating. At Luton, the nightmare goes on. These passengers have missed their connecting flights. Disgusting. But I don't understand why I have to accept something that you could very easily put us on if you wanted to. The seats are there, we are here, there is plenty of time. I have been on, on, on flights That's before that were delayed. I could be let on 10 minutes before the Sorry, flight was I'll, leaving. this lady can't hear me. That's your old one. The yeah, aircraft is sitting there on the tarmac, the man cannot be bothered to change a piece of paper. This passenger's connecting flight to Malaga is delayed and not due to depart for another hour. But the flight has closed. But I would like to talk to the supervisor. You will not be able to talk to the flight supervisor. There must you be something. You accept that you're not going to get onto that flight today. If you, no. if you could have been able to get onto it, you'd be, you'd be down out. And Helen, you yeah. can't. You're going to have to accept it. People will be expecting us in Malaga. They have driven in from the countryside to find us. They will not find us. I've tried to phone them. There's no way I can contact them. It's just very bad service. It's 6 p.m. and Jane's 12-hour shift is almost over. For the passengers, the knock-on effects of the fog will continue into the night but Jane is definitely leaving on time. I am going home tonight. I'm going to have about 50 fags in the car on the way home. And I'm going to have a nice hot bath, and then I'm going to have a bottle of red wine. But I'm on my own tonight, so I shall be drinking by myself. Relieving the stress that way. <laughs> oh, dear. 
the new £40 million terminal has recently opened at Luton Airport. Not everyone is impressed. I've been sitting there in the cafe watching for hours and it just said check in open, check in open, no sign of boarding, please can you get me on it? You've, you checked in on it though, didn't you? No! Yeah, you've checked in on it. Yeah, but I can't get onto it now, can I? No, it's by looks like I'm offloaded again because you're not going to sit anymore. But why didn't they put boarding up? I've been standing there looking at the screen for half an hour. Yeah, I, I told you to go straight through to domestic departures. But I, you said look at the screen. You said, I, I, I thought that was domestic departures. I said look at the screen. I said go straight through to departures. But I thought that you, was domestic departures. I didn't. The last one to check in. I, 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 I was here at 12 o'clock. I didn't. I thought that was domestic departures. I didn't know where it was. I've never been here before. I just sat there looking at the thing, looking at the thing, looking at the thing, thinking, oh, it must be delayed. Please get me onto it. I can't get you onto it now. That's gone. I just don't believe it. But why didn't they put boarding on it? Oh, my God. I've got a business meeting with Susie Watson is opening her own art gallery in Notting Hill. In just two hours' time, she's due to meet some promising new artists in Glasgow. Well, they, it must still be on the runway. <laughs> they've, they've already off offloaded you off the seat. Oh, please, the please try and get me onto it. Please, please, please. Please try and get me onto it. get you onto this flight. But why not? They must be out there still. As far as I'm aware, this, this aircraft's actually gone. Well, shall I go through and see? You won't be able to get through to departures now. But it's your fault right? because it wasn't on the screen. I don't know why he wasn't actually on the screen through there, but when you checked in, I told you to go through to domestic but departures. But I thought that was the domestic... I didn't know where domestic departures was. I thought you meant just the lounge where you wait and watch your boarding thing, like you do in any other airport. Please just give me the thing back, so at least I've got evidence that I had it. Departures have removed you from the system. I, I know, but... But, now because it's just but you haven't issued it. I've already got it. I've just given it back to you. Okay, I would have asked you back straight away anyway. But you didn't know where I was. Do. It just didn't come up. I've been sitting there watching it for half an hour. He doesn't give a damn. Hi. Oh, hello. Good hi. morning. Come here. You must be Georgie. I am. Hi. Nice hi. This is James. Nice to see you. It's Georgie's big day. Under the watchful eye of Captain McBride, She'll take her first so ever flight for EasyJet. And this is Taryn. To become a fully qualified EasyJet pilot, she'll have to do 30 training flights. But the first is always the hardest. One thing I'm going to say to you today is don't forget the experience you've got, right? Yeah. Because that's not gone away. Okay? No. I know you've been off for six months and you yeah. think, oh, I'm really going to be rusty and um, you know, I'm going to forget everything. You're not. Mm. It's all in there somewhere. Okay. Right? And it's our job to just bring it out, mm. join the line training. Good. We've got 30 flights in line training, mm. plenty of time, and then we'll get you online. Okay? okay? Okay, do you have anything in your possessions given to you by anybody? There you go, you're boarding at 9. In the terminal, so Katrina faces a flyer who's anxious for a different reason. Is it safe? Is it safe? Of course it is. But this is the airplane who crashed twice, no? The airplane who crashed twice, no? No, it hasn't crashed twice. I'm scared of this airplane. It's fine, it's fine, honestly. Because I don't know, I never flew with this uh, easy jet, so it doesn't seem to me like it's a safe aeroplane. It is a safe aeroplane. Mm -hmm. It is, I promise. Do you want us to board you first? Are you, are you a nervous fly or...? Yeah, really. Do you want us to board you first? But I can sit with my friend. Of course you can. You, you all board together, OK? okay. Fine. Thank okay. you very much. Thank no you. Problem. Bye. Because it's a budget airline, she wanted to know whether the captains are properly trained. Are they? Yes, they are. <laughs> My name's James McBride, and with me on the flight deck this afternoon is uh, First Officer Georgie Hobbs. Very warm welcome on board this EasyJet flight. The 603 service. Georgie is just minutes away from her maiden flight. We'll be on our way in just a few minutes. It's the captain's job to taxi the plane to the runway. But then it's all over to Georgie for the takeoff. Clear takeoff, 260, you find it clock. Clear takeoff, this is 601. Are you happy? Yes. Clear to go. You have control. I have control. It's Georgie's moment of truth. Set thrust. Thrust set. Check. 80 knots. Check. V1, rotate. Positive five. Gear up. Select or in. Failure select, you have it. Turning to four. Okay, it's coming back. 
coming back to me. Just like coming home, eh? Yeah. You say it's the first day, she's doing very well indeed. Back in the cabin, most of the passengers seem to agree. Fair play, dear. Girl par. <laughs> but does she do the cooking when she gets on? <laughs> what was our actual takeoff weight out of Liverpool? In the cockpit, Georgie's being put to the test. Uh, no, sorry, what we're talking about. It was. Four, eight, five. Sorry, you don't, you shouldn't five, have to remember. Something like five, three, one, seventy or something like that, wasn't it? Where would you find it? Five, three, one, forty. Thirty kilograms out. Still, very good. But two lads on a stag weekend are not so impressed with having a female pilot. Is she qualified or is she training? <laughs> she's qualified and she's in charge. Can they get out here? I'll walk the rest of the way. <laughs> I wish she hadn't have told me. I'll have to get more of these now. We'll have to have more, won't we, lads? Well, I drive a taxi, night, and you can't drive a car. You know, they did it about going left and right. They can't park in a multi-storey car park. <laughs> and you fly planes. Do you want to send them up here? <laughs> <laughs> well... Susie has tried to find a more sympathetic ear. Instead, she's found Jane Bolton. You didn't go through to departures, no. No, because I didn't know that, that I thought that's where you waited and looked at the screen to find out what gate you were. No, no, because I was actually sitting with him when he told you to go straight through to departures. You have to I have to go right through, you have to go I through know, passport control that. and everything. I didn't know that. I so actually, the next I mean, why would I not go? You know, well, I, I'm I thought. That's <laughs> up to you. I, yeah, um, but I, but I promise you, I had a really... Yeah, no, but obviously we can't fault you from a coffee shop, so... No, 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 but I sat there looking at the screen, waiting for it to say... Yeah, no, gate. we did actually say to you needed to go straight through to domestic departures. Well, so this big arrow there saying departures, you just have to keep following this, the arrow to departures, yeah. and then everybody, when but you I go through departures... Gone. If I'd in understood, the airport, what I'm saying is you really ought to make sure people do understand fully, because that screen up with there... With all due respect, 138 passengers got on that flight this morning that haven't been here before either, so... I mean, apart from walk everybody else through and tell you where it is, there's not a lot else we can do. Well, I agree, obviously, I'm incredibly thick. So Susie has finally it. accepted that the plane's gone. Now she'll go on standby for the next Glasgow flight. But a coffee shop does not look like departures, I'm sorry. 33,000 feet above the English Channel, Georgie is preparing for a difficult landing. The Amsterdam control tower has just warned of strong crosswinds on the runway. Um, and if we should have to go around for any reason, it's to climb straight ahead 2,000 feet on a straight track at 269 and talk to ATC. Crosswinds, is, you know, it's not that dangerous or anything, it's just, you know, a bit more of a challenge. When you actually um, get over the threshold, then you, like, kick it straight on the runway, also keeping uh, the wing, the wings, make sure, you know, the wing, turn the wing into um, wind and basically um, I just down the runway, no. Um. I mean, I don't really criticise landings because it's quite hard to do, you know. Uh, but, as I said, you know, anything you walk away from is a good landing, isn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has switched on the fasten seatbelt sign. Could you please return to your seats and ensure your seatbelts are securely fastened? The landing will also be a tense time for one of the members of the stag party. It's not very quiet, hasn't it? <laughs> He's not a very good flyer at all. The wind's uh, 040 at 18 knots, OK? Yeah. So what final approach speed did you want? One, well, we'll say 140. 140. Sounds good. When I come back from Benidorm last year, we had the trainee pilot, and he bounced it down the runway at Liverpool. And it was a bad landing, and that's why we're big. Yeah, so good to me. Here they are, flat 15. Oh, that's the landing gear. With the runway in sight and the winds picking up, Georgie is about to face her toughest test. Three five hundred radio. Check. Fish. Get your parachutes out. <laughs> Being a good Catholic boy, I am. Three hundred Mary should suffice. <laughs> Je 
you found the brakes. <laughs> and your brakes, good. I have control. You have control. You could have used a little bit more. Rudder. Rudder, yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously the ailerons to balance, but all it is is practice at it. And uh, the crosswind landings aren't easy, are they? No. Gentlemen out here, we'd like to compliment you on your landing. Oh, good. Good. I hope they go. There she is. Hello, Hi. Georgie. Hi. Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, good. Georgie. You might say a few bad things on the telly, but I was, right. I'm a He's taxi really driver, <laughs> right? And I was only messed. Good. And did you like the landing? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was better than last time. You can take it all back. Yeah. Good. It was you, obviously you a bad flying last time. Uh, when are you coming back? Sunday. Oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'll try to. Parking was Just obviously so you get a good flight again. Yeah, we, we were just a bit worried about your parking. <laughs> it's okay. So you it's okay. The captain. Oh, no, I didn't. I'll go and put my lips to on now. Look at yourself. Georgie has answered her critics, but Captain McBride has a little secret to reveal. Ah, uh, we were in the descent, actually, and she said to me, you could land it and, and they wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Georgie, I couldn't possibly... How could I possibly compromise my professional integrity? But it was no. such a beautiful landing it that was I'm glad I did it myself. beautiful though. landing. <laughs> and she's so glad that I didn't do it. Yeah. Nothing yeah. to add to that, ma'am. Yeah, Great. you did all right. <laughs> Well, they just didn't put that it was boarding, so I thought it must Susie be delayed. delayed her meeting and made it to Glasgow on the next flight. And Ian made his meeting half an hour late, but well, better late time. than never. Lawrence, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And for Georgie, one training flight down, just 29 to go. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>